There was a case that happened in Smithfield, Rhode Island that I found kind of interesting. It happened in 1992, July 20th. There had been a fishing tournament that went from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. around the Smith and Sales Reservoir. A couple of hours after the tournament ended, two men decided to return for some night fishing. They were at the end of a peninsula facing the shore. Just off the shore, tucked back a ways was an empty house. There were no lights on, and it was quite dark. It was also very quiet. At some point, the witness noticed what he thought was a helicopter coming down in the cove behind the house. When the lights dimmed, the two witnesses assumed that a vehicle had come down the road and turned around and left, but at no point did they see a vehicle or hear it. They eventually dismissed it and carried on. We continued fishing towards the shore in plain view of the house. When I noticed what looked like children playing with flashlights moving frantically, in one of the rooms of the house through the windows. My fishing partner and I decided people must have come to the house, even though we never seen a car or people, and the power must be turned off in the house. They continued fishing. Moments later, the witness noticed figures standing on the shoreline. This surprised him as he had not heard or seen anybody approaching the shore. It was as if they just appeared there. There was an abnormally large, seven-foot-tall, human-shaped figure with a smaller, child-sized human-shaped figure with the larger one looking like it was holding a flashlight looking for frogs and such at the water's edge. The odd thing was the way they were illuminating, almost like glow-in-the-dark, but we dismissed that as the flashlight reflecting off the water back at them strangely. Just then we noticed about 15 to 20 glowing shaped figures all on the shore facing us, all different sizes. We got freaked out because there was never any noise this whole time, and we were close enough to have heard people walking in the brush near shore. Just as they were contemplating leaving, the seven foot tall entity shined his flashlight, or what they took to be a flashlight, directly towards their boat. Whatever these figures were, it was clear to the two friends that they were suddenly aware of their presence. The friend began to panic, insisting that they needed to leave. The main witness claims he frantically pulled the cord while keeping his eye on the shoreline. The flashlight levitated across about 30 to 40 yards of water as I was keeping half an eye on it and starting the motor. When it turned over and I put it in gear, I looked up and the light was about eight feet above our small boat. I never looked back, and it was a short three-minute ride back to the boat ramp. We hurried, throwing the boat in the van, and got inside the van in shock. All the dogs on the lake were barking loudly. We never heard a dog before this. They quickly left the area. Fearing they would be ridiculed, they promised not to tell anyone of what they saw. It would take over 20 years for their story to be told. There are a lot of UFO cases that happen in and around reservoirs. It makes you wonder, what is it about reservoirs that these visitors find so appealing? In July 1973, a disc-like object was observed in the Clear Fork Reservoir. It was around 5.45 a.m. Two witnesses, a man named Al and his uncle David, who had only recently returned from serving in Vietnam, were in the process of getting their boat in the water when they observed a strange object across the reservoir, hovering 10 to 15 feet above the water. It was a classic disc, claimed the witness. It was aluminum colored, with a dome on top and a bright light on the bottom. To the witness, it appeared to be spewing a caramel colored smoke. It was also spilling something into the water. To David, it appeared as though the object was, quote, getting fresh water and flushing out their tanks, unquote. Al acknowledged that there was some fog that morning, but the craft was clearly visible, and his uncle was deeply disturbed by it. He recalled that his face looked white. He began stuttering and almost instantly demanded that they leave. 
They turn around to leave, and by this time there was two other guys up there, a guy getting ready to back up and waiting on us, and all five or six of us is standing there with our jaws hanging open, looking at this thing that must have been there, I bet you, close to 20 minutes. It went straight up about a football field, and it shot off at a right angle. I mean straight like 45 degrees, and went straight out. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. In ufology, there are reports of UFOs sucking up or dumping water. In fact, waterufo.net has compiled hundreds of such reports, and it makes you wonder how exactly does water factor into UFOs and how they operate if they do at all. Maybe the water is used as a cooling mechanism. Maybe the water is needed for the craft's propulsion. Or maybe the water is collected so the occupants can drink it. In 1954, two boys fishing for carp in Emerson, New Jersey, next to the Oratel Reservoir, watched as a dark object raised out of the water and disappeared. They were not allowed to fish there, but the witness, a man named Cliff, recalled that he and his friend Jimmy did it anyway. On this particular night, Cliff, now in his 70s, remembered that he had returned home late. He and his friend Jimmy had forgotten some tackle at the reservoir when they went back to retrieve it. That is when they observed the object. We saw this UFO come out of the water, and it came out of the water, but the unusual part was it did not disturb the water. It didn't make a ripple. There wasn't any bubbles. It wasn't anything, and this thing was probably... Now remember, I'm a little kid, so I'm bad on size. I say it was probably 30 to 40 feet across. It came up and it left, period. Amen. When it left, it blinked out. It just wasn't there anymore. When Cliff returned home, he told his father, who immediately dismissed his UFO sighting as nonsense. This always bothered Cliff because there was no way he could prove what he saw. There was no verification process. There was no nothing to do about it. The following day, four or five other people saw it, but they saw it at a different time of day, and they said it glowed blue and orange. When we saw it, it was just kind of the glow. It wasn't a glow. It was just the moonlight reflecting off of it, but it was as plain as day. It had no windows. It had no propulsion system. We just saw it come up out of the water, and it's like, holy crap, look at this, and away it went. It made no noise, no flashing lights, no nothing. When it left, it come out of the water and went up about 30 to 40 feet, and, in a blink of an eye, it was gone. On December 24, 2004, five people in Chandler, Arizona, at around 5 a.m., observed a very strange sight while standing at a man-made lagoon, which was about four to six feet deep. The five were waiting to be picked up in order to do their job delivering ad circulars at another location. Suddenly, about 50 yards away, they observed a green, basketball-sized globe rising out of the water. Even stranger, as the object rose up, a small, about three foot tall being or figure arose behind and under it. Sadly, it was too dark and they could not make out any features. As they watched in shock, the figure then appeared to walk on the water, taking about three steps. At that point, the globe started to glow a bright white and then shot straight into the sky and disappeared. The short figure also apparently disappeared as he was no longer visible on the water. Is it possible that these beings are using our world's waterways as a cover to move about freely without being detected? In his book UFOs and Water, Physical Effects of UFOs on Water Through Accounts by Eyewitnesses, Carl W. Faint suggests that UFOs are able to pass fluidly through the mediums of outer space, air, and water assisted by a type of generated protective energy field. This would explain the 1954 case, in which the witnesses claimed that the water remained undisturbed even after the craft emerged from it. In the book UFO Abduction from Undersea, 
Dr. Varillo Sanchez Ocheca describes a bizarre case in which two people were abducted from an oceanographic laboratory, an event that was witnessed by three people. The book also looks at other cases in which people who work in and around water experience alien contact. Certainly one is left with the sense that something is definitely going on in our world's waterways. <laughs>